70. This is James Snyder inviting you to join me each Sunday morning at 9.30 for Sunday Joy on 1370 AM 96.3 FM. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before 11 o'clock, you are going to like this next story. Can you imagine uh, hearing stories of a relative of yours that uh, was arrested for sending Hitler uh, tin instead of nickel <laughs> and then getting arrested for it outside of Mae West's place? Yeah. I mean, you you would grow up thinking, oh, come on, that's just going to be one of those. There's no way that was true. Well, our next guest has that story about his great uncle, um, and it turns out it was absolutely true true and it sounds like his great uncle was a real character and a vaudevillian of that for that matter listen to this title it's called hustling hitler the jewish vaudevillian who fooled the fuhrer walter shapiro is on the phone to talk to us about this book uh walter is a journalist for four decades covering politics and government i think walter's been with us before i'm not sure uh he's a political columnist who has covered every presidential campaign since 1980 he's the recipient of the sigma delta chai award for best online columnist he served in the carter administration as president speechwriter. uh he performed stand-up comedy for a decade at clubs in new york well that, that's contrary to what we just read isn't it i know but i think it's amazing i think he inherited yeah. all the the because his uncle his great uncle has yeah. Also, a whole bunch of different, seemingly unrelated uh, things that he had done in his life. Hustling Hitler, the Jewish vaudevillian who fooled the Fuhrer, the untold story of Walter Shapiro's great uncle, Freeman Bernstein, who changed the course of history. And he absolutely did, because the Germans needed that nickel. That's I'm, I'm going to let him tell you that story. Walter, good morning, sir. How are you? Oh, how can I not be glorious after that introduction? Yeah, where, where, where are you? I know you said you're in a hotel room, but where? I'm, I'm, I bring the hotel with me. Um, it's a traveling hotel. Oh, you're in so, an RV. Uh, no, seriously, I'm in San Francisco. Oh, it's San Francisco. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, on, Knob, on Knob Hill, to be precise. <laughs> so, I mean, so how do I say it? It's really, um, it's, we call it Ocala, Florida West. Okay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> wow, you're really on top of things. Uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us. This is a fascinating story. I mean, with all of your background and all the things you've done before this, this is really different from what you've done before, from what I understand, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah, it's really hard to both cover the 2016 campaign, which is pretty depressing, and spend your, the rest of your time uh, um, trying to um, follow your great uncle who abandons vaudeville troops um, in strange places, um, was big in the 1926 Miami uh, land boom, uh, where people could often buy and sell um, um, Plots within ten uh, ten times a day. Uh, he <coughs> uh, he also um, was a, m a major racetrack fixer. Do you have any idea how hard you have to work to be banned from racing in three <laughs> countries? <laughs> he was he was not even ethical enough for Tijuana. Uh, oh wow! Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and Variety, which had. Um, the Show Business Weekly, which charted his exploits, explained that Freeman Bernstein's horses were overeducated. In the far turn, they would always look back and look at the tote board. <laughs> oh, that's, you, oh, you got you got a hundred jokes, don't you? All right, so to uh, give us the uh, I guess the lineage. He's your father or your mother's side? Uh, 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 he, my, I grew up hearing my father's stories about his uncle Freeman. So he's my great uncle on my father's okay, side. Okay, great uncle on your father's and side. He was born in Troy, New York in 1873, uh, Jewish immigrant parents. But the whole point was my father was a very mild mannered Connecticut city planner going to zoning board hearings in the evening. How to did, put it a different way, I did not live a flamboyant childhood. <laughs> How did you end at, up in at, San Francisco? Uh, um, on the book tour. Oh, okay, okay. So you don't live there. Do you live in New York? Oh no, no. I, I live in, I live in New York, and I divide my time between New York and Washington, covering the campaign. Okay. Uh, San, okay. Fr San Francisco 
um, that's why I'm in a hotel room. It isn't like I'm one of these legendary author, authors who lives in a hotel suite. Can, can, can I, <laughs> I, I, since you're a political writer, and there is a political implication with this from 1937, so I have a question about this. In 1937, America was not unfriendly to Adolf Hitler, were, were we? We were okay with him. Well, um, uh, many people were appalled by Hitler, but we had normal diplomatic and commercial relations. So when um, he nicked the Nazis in the nickel deal, he got indicted for grand larceny in New York to, because the middle the deal, um, the uh, district attorney's office said the deal took place in New York, and therefore it was a crime. And he then, oh, I didn't mention, he was a self-crowned king, jade king of China. And as <laughs> soon as... As soon as he cheated the Nazis on the nickel deal and got the equivalent of two million dollars, he took off for the Orient shrewdly uh, before the boat uh, with the bogus cargo landed in Hamburg. Um, so he was actually selling diamonds, jade, and other um, jewels to Mae West uh, when he was arrested. Really, and oh my and, gosh. and and did he know Mae West in the biblical sense? <laughs> uh, well. Uh, <laughs> How do I say it? Um, he was, um, by that point, um, he was in his mid-60s and rather rotund. But Mae West, um, at that point, um, was the biggest star um, in Hollywood by far in terms of grosses. And he did put her on the vaudeville stage when she was 10 years old. He did? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that something? Oh, wow. So, so tell oh, me. No, no it, he, in his vaudeville career, um, he um, booked Mae West. Al Jolson, George Burns. George Burns discusses him at length in his autobi- one of his autobiographies. So, I mean, he was a major Broadway character before, oh, shockingly enough, um, he nicked Hitler on the nickel deal and hustling Hitler. Yeah, and, and so you heard these stories when you were a kid, and you did not believe them, or you wondered? Of course. I mean, I look at my father, and uh, my father is, um, as I said, as big a show business um, I mean, he knows shows business like he knew Gregorian chants. And suddenly he's dropping all these bygone, na- bygone names from 100 years ago, right. 90 years ago. Um, I mean, it made no sense. It was like my father telling me, son, you're a direct descendant of Sitting Bull. It's impressive, but implausible. Is, is that true, though? That I'm a direct descendant of Sitting Bull? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, so in other words, some of the things your dad told you well, maybe that was just a joke, a direct descendant of sitting. Maybe there's a, I'm guessing you know. That was my, you see, um, you see, sometimes I used to perform stand-up comedy in clubs. In oh, so York. you just did a joke and I, I fell for it. Okay. I just did a joke. Sorry. Did, you see, sometimes you do a joke and it's so deadpan. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, I got it. All right. Uh, but seriously, um, the whole point of Hustling Hitler is it's a fun book about my great uncle because I kept telling myself, this is not a Winston Churchill biography. If the anecdote isn't funny or it doesn't illuminate character, okay, era, okay. don't put it in. Uh, the the you, just the very look of your great uncle is funny. I mean, he's got a look that makes it. I would think be, if I didn't know him, I would think this is a guy who does comedy. Well, um, some of his scams were quite comedic. Um, 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 uh, um, he loved hotel rooms with multi- hotels with many exits. Um, he was very big at selling the hot dog rights to Grant's Tomb, uh, <laughs> and, and he and his wife, a showgirl, um, had this. Wo- they were wonderful together um, because on ocean liners they did what they called the anniversary hustle. He was a card shark, and the first night out from port, they would go into the Grand Salon first class. Um, they always travel first class mm-hmm. and say, "This is, tonight's our anniversary. The champagne's on us. And the champagne would flow. Of course, the next day, Freeman would suggest a little friendly game of cards. And these rich people in first class normally would be suspicious, but they had just celebrated his anniversary the la- night before. He was a friend. Right. So by the time the boat docked in Europe, he generally made back ten times the cost of the champagne. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, that so he is didn't. So, fun. so he didn't get away with anything. I mean, he actually paid for it. Well, he paid for it in a sense. Yeah. Um, uh, um, I'm, 
I mean in the sense that he did spend in 1937 two months in L.A. County Jail um, as they fought extradition. And eventually the Hollywood Jewish community, including Al Jolson, Mae West, and a famous direct, um, studio owner by the name of Joseph Schenck, co-founder of 20th Century Fox, mobilized a campaign for him. Um, and um, as a result, the governor of California refused to extradite, which, uh, which is almost unprecedented. Oh, did I mention that uh, Freeman Bernstein's lawyer uh, was at the time dating Lana Turner? No, oh I, I don't gosh. think he'd mentioned it. No, I don't think so. Wow, he uh, was uh, in super <laughs> huge circles then. Yeah, you, you could drop names all day long, it sounds like. Uh-huh. So oh, he did, he did. I mean, uh, um, when he was arrested in L.A., uh, he pointed up to his uh, sign for the Bintage Theater and said, I used to represent the Bintage Circuit uh, in vaudeville. I mean, he would drop any name you want. Um, he even, um, in a book he published after he was released, I'm sure he read it, was Hitler's nickel hijack. <laughs> I'm sure I've read it. I'm sure I've read it. It is my great what? uncle claims that, um, that the nickel was switched on the high seas uh, for scrap metal. I mean, it was just a, an unbelievable Oh, operation. that's awesome. That's Life awesome. What was, he, what was he arrested in L.A. for? Oh, he, uh, a fugitive warrant from New York. Um, oh, okay. For, for um, uh, hustling Hitler. Oh, for the same uh, thing, the, because he was arrested yeah. in New York for that fr- same thing. No, right? he was indicted. Sorry, uh, sorry, it's early morning here, and um, words and I are just at odds. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, so he was uh, indicted in New York, and then he, he was left. Indicted in New York, took off for the Orient, where he's the Jade King of China, gotcha. and then arrested in L.A. How much time is, is passed between the time he was indicted and the time he was arrested? A year, um, oh, wow. and but I mean he was such a flamboyant character. It wasn't hard to find. Uh, four months earlier, he was in the Los Angeles Times uh, from uh, um, uh, from Palm Springs, California, announcing that he had arrived with a new bunch of jade and other jewels to sell. Uh, so it wasn't. It was like finding him in Hollywood was as hard as finding Lou Gehrig at first base at Yankees. Uh, okay, okay, easy to find him. All right, let's let's take a little break. Uh, Walter Shapiro is our guest. His book is uh, is fascinating book. If you're familiar with Walter's work, this is different than what you're familiar with. Uh, the book is called Hustling Hitler: The Jewish Vaudevillian Who Fooled the Fuhrer, who just happens to be Walter's great uncle, Freeman. Uh, let me get his last name again. And Bernstein. Bernstein. Freeman Bernstein. All right. Uh, we'll take a little break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Thursday, partly sunny with an afternoon thunderstorm in places, the high 89 to 93, and clear to partly cloudy Thursday nights and overnight those 72 to 76. On Friday, times of clouds and sun. Watch out for an afternoon thunderstorm, high 91 to 95. Saturday, partly sunny with a thunderstorm around in the afternoon, high 90 to 94. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9.30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. New windows will beautify your home and bring you immediate energy savings. Renewal by Anderson of Central Florida leads the way in quality and installs the name brand homeowners trust. Visit RenewalByAnderson.com for a free in-home consultation with the pros. Right now, buy four windows and get the fifth free. Plus, no money down, 0% interest, and zero payments for 12 months with approved credit. Visit RenewalByAnderson.com. That's RenewalByAnderson.com. Offer ends July 31st. License CGC 1523333. This is Kendall Carpenter with Golden Ocala Golf and Equestrian Club. I wanted to introduce you to the finest equestrian opportunity available. If you love horses and enjoy Central Florida's mild climate and rich rolling landscape, come explore Golden Ocala. Bridal trails weave their way through this stunningly beautiful community of stately homes. Our state-of-the-art equestrian center will meet all of your equestrian needs with style. Visit us at goldenocala.com. 
Has it really been one year? Kim Long Vietnamese Restaurant is having a celebration to commemorate the one-year anniversary since they started on this culinary journey. As part of the celebration, Kim Long will be offering great discounts to their beloved customers as a thank you. For the entire month of June, all meals are 10% off and kids eat free from 3 to 5 p.m. Domestic beers are $1 and import beers are $2. Kim Long is open daily 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday noon to 10 p.m. That's Kim Long Vietnamese Restaurant, 1022 South Pine Avenue in Ocala. W-W-W-W-W-O-C-A <laughs> When it really counts, depend on the source for the latest weather updates, keeping you ahead of the storm. 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. Hi, I'm Fran Darkington. When I need news, I pass the rest and tune to The Source. W-O-C-A. Ten minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Walter Shapiro is on the phone out in San Francisco getting up early to talk to us about his new book called Hustling Hitler. It's about his great uncle Freeman Bernstein who changed the course of history. Uh, the subtitle, The Jewish Vaudevillian Who Fooled the Fuhrer. He's, if you're just tuning in, he, sent, uh, he sold Hitler a, sh- a shipload of nickel, uh, but what sh- Hitler got instead was a a, sh- a shipload. I gotta say that carefully. Yeah, a shipload of tin. <laughs> um, and what did he get paid? Two two million dollars for that back in 1936. Uh, uh, the equivalent of two million dollars today. Yes. Uh, admittedly, my great uncle's partner, a corrupt metals dealer in Toronto, um, eventually ended up with most of it. Um, and Freeman Bernstein um, sadly died broke. Did he do that because he knew what Hitler was up to, or did he just do it to make a buck? Well, it was a funny thing. I'm glad you asked that question, because uh, both he and his um, compatriots in Toronto were Jewish, and they preferred the idea of ripping off the Nazis. But they were also businessmen, and if the Dutch would pay more for the cargo, they would have sold it to the Dutch. But they really loved the idea of substituting um, high-grade nickel uh, with Canadian rusted tin cans and rusted railroad track, which they delivered to Hamburg. In fact, <laughs> after, afterwards, um, my great uncle said, you know, if you melted it down, there's probably some nickel in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I guess the question, and I've never really known this, forgive me, because I probably could look it up, but did we know that the beginnings of the Holocaust were already in place at that time? We knew that there was tremendous anti-Semitism under Hitler. Uh, in fact, uh, I do believe that uh, my, my great uncle, by the way, was very good at traveling without a passport, so we cannot verify some of his travels totally. But um, I do believe he visited um, Nazi Germany in late 1935, a Jewish businessman from New York, which was still possible. But this was also, uh, he was going to high holy Jewish services in Germany in the fall of in October of 35, just at the same time uh, the Nazis were enacting the Nuremberg Laws, which basically stripped every Jewish, uh, every Jew in Germany of German citizenship. I uh, love the fact that uh, your great uncle was a dog lover and his dog Benny sounded so cute. Oh, it was a wonderful b- ball of fluff. I mean, he was just a wonderful carrier. And as Mae West um, makes clear in her autobiography, uh, uh, Benny was also really, really good at smuggling jewels. What would happen <laughs> is a couple of out, hours out of uh, port, um, when they're coming back from the Orient, Benny would be, would be um, fed a mineral-rich diet. And then when you got to customs, there was this distinguished gentleman with a flower in his boutonniere uh, coming in from the Orient wearing a straw hat. Uh, what could be nicer? He has his little ball, ball of fluff on a leash. <laughs> we'll just wave him through. <laughs> so they fed the dog. When you say minerals, you mean jewels? Uh, uh, I can send you a diagram. <laughs> yeah. So he was poop, he was pooping diamonds after the or, or uh, I, uh, those of us who build our lives around dignity uh, always leave out the little left. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. I, I have not done the same. I haven't built my life around dignity. Do you know? You know what occurred to me, Walter, is that I could easily end this interview with you in about six minutes when we're when we're done, and then go back to you and talk about current events because you're cu- you're covering the the current uh, political scene. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, I am um, I'm going to be going to both conventions. In fact, the last paragraph of Hustling Hitler 
was written in a New Hampshire motel room the day of the New Hampshire primary. <laughs> so I, I yes, yeah, so I um, I'm not exactly like one of these old time football types with a leather helmet who plays offense and defense, but. Um, uh, this is, shall we say, my refuge from the 2016 campaign, if, Hustling Hitler. For, for those who want to, if you just go to Google News and you type in Walter Shapiro, you'll see stories about Donald Trump and stories about this book called Hustling Hitler. <laughs> you'll, see, you'll, see, you'll think to yourself, is this the same guy? Is this ball? Is it one guy? And yes, it uh, is. Uh, by the way, unlike um, Trump, um, um, my great uncle had a heart of gold um, and was um, was somebody who wanted everything to be square if only he had enough money. His problem was he rarely had enough money. Well, he just loved helping people, and that was another uh, great part of uh, your uh, uncle's caring and passion. Yeah, no, I mean, it, I mean, when he was in the chips, he would share with everyone. Uh, normally broke, there's one point when he got $100, he immediately went to the biggest Times Square restaurant, ordered breakfast for $2, um, because he wanted to see everyone bringing back the silver tray filled with change. He got his $98 back, a friend saw the pile of money, and immediately borrowed 75 on the spot. Wow. Tell, wow. tell me about the uh, the, the uh, Irish event in Boston. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is my fa of all of his hustles, of all the scams. This is my <laughs> favorite. Uh, Freeman Bernstein looked a little like you could imagine a Freeman Bernstein would look, uh, except with triple chins. He did not look Irish, but in 1929, <laughs> a gentleman looking suspiciously like him, under the name of Roger O'Ryan organized an Irish festival in Boston. The Blarney Stone was legitimate. It was dug up from the backyard of a farmer named Blarney. <laughs> um, uh, and, and the menus from Din Dinty Moore's, which was a famous Irish restaurant, were legitimate. Uh, actually, um, the, the food wasn't. Um, the placemats had been stolen from Dinty Moore's. <laughs> uh, but uh, the big highlight was when it was time to pay everyone. And oddly enough, Mr. O'Brien disappeared. But both the Boston police and the Boston papers tracked down my great uncle, and they were filled with, a, in addition to another grand larceny indictment, uh, the headlines were always about Mr. Orionstein. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Jewish Irishman. A Jewish yeah, Irishman. A, a very Jewish Irishman. Uh, Leopold Blum uh, in U um, Ulysses was a Jewish Irishman, but this is a little different literature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since uh, people in high places seem to know what Hitler was up to and had the sixth sense, how come they put Hitler on the cover of Time? Uh, be, uh, having worked for Time for six years, um, the whole point was... Uh, he was the man of the year because the whole original idea was whoever affects the world for good or evil yeah, the most yeah. oh, in the world. Okay. Something okay. we. So this was this was not um, a, this was not the seal of approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay. a lot of people yeah, don't realize that. But yeah. it, but in hindsight, in hindsight, maybe I don't know. Maybe they would change that. But they st they still consider like they considered Osama bin Laden one year, but didn't they? Yeah, they did. A couple of years. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, and, but uh, for all of our seriousness about Hitler, uh, I really wrote this in the style of the movie, the producers, or the musical comedy. You, and you did that. I, this I, is not a Holocaust book. This no. is an American book that ends in the 1930s, and it's funny. Yeah, and and, and I, that's important to say, because if we want people to get the book and, and, and know what they're going to get in advance, at least a little bit, you trust me, you will have you will find this funny, especially knowing <laughs> that that you have uh, pulled one over on uh, the guy who the killed pure. so many of Jewish of the Jewish people. Um, Walter, you're a great guest. Thank you so much for being on the air. I, I um, hope if you're ever in Florida, you come into the studio. Uh, I have a copy of the book. Oh, oh, um, you have a Senate race uh, of such fascination. I'll be around. Oh, good. Oh, good. Good. Oh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I don't think Rubio likes me, by the way. I don't know why. But when we no. talk to him, he talks to me like he doesn't like me. So, Well, I'm, if he doesn't like you today, he'll like you tomorrow. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, now especially now that he's running again. Right, exactly. Uh, uh, the book is called Hustling Hitler. Call me if you want the copy that was sent to me. It's a big hardcover book. You will love this. The Jewish vaudevillian who fooled the Fuhrer. The rest of us have to go buy it. We've got 45 seconds to give that information, Walter. Where, where do we get it? Everywhere books are sold? Uh, everywhere fine books are sold and also where my book is sold. <laughs> uh, Walter, you're a character. Thank you so much for being on the air with us. And, oh, it's, it's really been fun. And come back anytime with any topic. I think we can cover everything with you. <laughs> Oh, I will discuss Gregorian chants next time. Oh, oh no, let's not do that. That's not good. That's, that puts me to sleep. Uh, thank you, Walter. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. This is a Fox News alert. I'm Lillian Wu. The Supreme Court tied in a vote on the president's immigration plan. It sought to shield about 4 million illegal